Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to install a Telnet server on Ubuntu Linux. Uh, and this is in the year 2023. Now, if you don't see why the problem, what the problem is with that, well, it's a good thing you're watching this video. We're going to tell you why that's wrong and you should never do it. But also, if you do know what the problem is with that, um, we're, we're aware of that and we're just we're going to show you what not to do in this video. So you should never do this unless you're just doing it just to try it out, just for fun. But never use Telnet to access your system because it's horribly insecure and it's been obsolete for probably the last, like, uh, I'm not sure how many years, but ever since, I mean, I started using Linux back in like, you know, the year 2001 or so. And um, it was long since obsolete back then. People have been using SSH probably since uh, the early 90s, I would say, at least, maybe maybe even longer. But yeah, Telnet is absolutely obsolete and you should never use it. And the reason for that is that it sends your, we're gonna show you how, we're gonna, we're gonna try to install it and, and run it on this server right now. Um, I'm kind of shooting from the hip with this this video. So I've, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna give it a shot and then see what we can do. But um, so the reason you don't wanna use Telnet, the main reason is that it will send, it, it does not encrypt your information. The connection is not encrypted. So anyone on the network can see your password in clear text. They can, as uh, so, so long as someone's monitoring the network traffic, they will see your password, they will see all your authentication info in clear text. And they can then use that, they can then just copy your password and just log in as you if they want. They basically can just grab your info. Um, you, know, you know, Anyone on the network that you're communicating over can just grab your password and use it. Uh, whereas with SSH, it's encrypted and no one can read the info that's going over the wire, so they can't steal your password. But yeah, using Telnet, especially over the internet. Now, in this case, I'm gonna be doing it on my local host, and it's probably relatively safe on my home network as long as no one else is on it, but I still wouldn't even use it on a home network, especially when SSH is installed by default. You have SSH installed by default, it's easier to set up, either easier to find information on how to set up. There's no reason to ever use Telnet. But definitely if you're doing it over the internet, someone's gonna grab your password. Like it's just gonna happen. It's just, yeah, it's, it's not a safe thing to do. So anyways, um, I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if this package didn't even exist, but um, I'm betting it does. So let, let's say now, normally when I install a package, <coughs> I would say <coughs> sudo for root permissions. And I would say apt update first, to update my repo info, um, just to get the latest info about the repos. But I've already done that a few minutes ago for something else that I installed. So I'm all up to date now. So instead of so I've already run apt update. So now I'm going to run apt install telnet d. And we're going to want to continue. And there we go. So it looks like telnet is installed. So let's try it. Let's just try telnetting to the local host. Telnet, zippy zap. There we go. We just telneted into our. Okay, it's it's asking for the password or the login and password. So user one, and there we go. I just telneted in. <clears throat> I just telneted into my host. So I'm on the same host. I telneted into the same host that I'm already on, but um, but yeah, I was able to successfully. That's how easily I can install Telnet. I'm I'm so. I'm not too surprised it worked. It, they probably shouldn't provide it anymore, but they do. Um, if someone doesn't know what they're doing, they could shoot themselves in the foot with this if they're looking at old documentation, or you know, maybe if there's someone who's really old getting back into computers again, something like that. I don't know. Maybe someone who hasn't touched a computer since the '80s and now wants to set something up again, um, or someone who's out of touch. But in any case, <clears throat> so I just SSH into my own system. So I'm going to exit. Now that's it, Telnet zippy zap. I was able to Telnet in. Now let's look at the process, Telnet D. So, all right, I'm not seeing it running. Maybe it's running with uh, Xinet D or something. Um, that, that can't be the case. Okay, so if we run sudo netstat dash NPTL, and we're going to grep for 
port 23. That's the Telnet port. Okay, so we see there's a few things running. <clears throat> and we can see on port 23, we have inetd running. So it's, it's not x inetd, it's inetd. And um, I haven't used this service in many years, but I, I, I think I might be thinking of the old Solaris systems we used to use. We had inetd for TFTP when we used to boot things off of the network. <clears throat> but um, yeah, inetd. So we have inetd running and inetd. Um, so when you rec it receives a request for telnet, we'll pass it off to the telnet daemon. So um, let's see here. Let's say if I were to, let me give this another shot. Let's telnet in. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna bring another terminal over here. The font's a bit smaller on here, but um, okay, so you can see telnet Okay, there's the telnet command and the telnet telnet D running. All right, so, whoops. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, hit that wrong key there, but. Uh, yeah, so here, here we go. So another terminal. Um, let's see, is that all displaying? Yeah, there we go. All right, so anyways, um, you can see here's the telnet command that I'm running. And here is the Telnet daemon, Telnet D. So there you go. All right, now to show you why this is insecure, we're, we're gonna show you how someone might capture the password. We're not gonna transmit our actual password, but um, I've logged into another server because this, this will only, so logging into my own host doesn't actually go over the network, so I can't really capture the packets. But if I connect from another host, say my NAS here, Duck Puppy, so I, I should be able to tell that from here, and it'll, you'll see how it transmits the the information in clear text. And this is going to show you why you shouldn't be using Telnet. So right here, we're going to use a tool called TCP Flow. You can install that with an apt install TCP Flow. We're going to run sudo TCP Flow on port 23. 23 being your Telnet port. <clears throat> so we're going to run this so it's listening. Okay, so we, we've got the output for this working a little bit better. So um, you, you can actually run TCP flow um, with a dash C option to just print everything out to, uh, you can see here I, I tested this, um, this shows a, a test password. So uh, you, you can use a dash C, so instead of writing to a capture file, you can just print it out to the console. And I'm still not sure why I didn't write the password to the capture file, but um, something to look into if I ever wanted to actually use this. But any case, we're capturing on port 23. Now we can jump over here. And we can try to telnet in. And you can see it gives you the prompt. See over here we're telnetting in. Over here we're capturing. It captures the prompt that it gave us. Now as we type user one, you can see and you can see the letters are doubled up because it sends U in both directions. So Telnet will send the, the U character to the server and then it echoes the U, U character back. Um, any case, so each character is doubled up. Now we hit enter. Now it asks us for the password. So we can say test one if that were our password and it's not echoing them. I'm, I'm actually not sure why that's the case. Hit enter. And it's going to fail to log in because that's obviously not my password. But you see here, the password that I tried, test1, is captured in real text. Now, if that were your real password and someone on the internet were, were capturing this, that would be a real problem. And this is why you don't use Telnet. If we used SSH, we would not be able to capture that. So, yeah, just um, you know, be aware of that. And hopefully you found this interesting. Might want to give me a thumbs up for this video. And um, yeah, g give me a thumbs up if, if you feel like giving me a thumbs up for this video. Um, you you want to might want to leave a comment down below if you know something I don't know or if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say. Uh, we do want to hear it. Um, also, uh, you know, you want to hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of other great content coming up. A lot of like, you know, a lot of Linux stuff, a lot of servers, coding, electronics, Raspberry Pis, robots. Um, 
3D printing, a lot of other great tech stuff. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. So hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't even let you know when we come out with a new video. And that's pretty much it for today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video. And I almost forgot, we're, we're going to want to actually remove this. So um, we, we do actually want to remove Telnet from this because we, we don't want it running. So um, sudo apt move telnet d. And let's see. There we go. No more telnet d.